Hi everyone and welcome to my review of Terence Fisher's Dracula in 1958, also known as uh, The Horror of Dracula. Um, now this is a film um, that I have seen twice before um, and I thought I'd review it, I'd watch it and review it tonight because um, you know last week it was Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, the Coppola version um, and you know I, I saw kind of, I've seen Nosferatu, I've seen Nosferatu the Vampire and uh, yeah, I just I just like the story of Dracula, and um, there's been quite a few great adaptations. Um, and yes, I think this is one of them. Um, now this is a Blu-ray, and it comes with uh, the, the kind of the Hammer restoration, of 2012, um, three disc disc set. This is, and um, yeah, this this DVD and Blu-ray. So this is a great, I definitely recommend it. Um, it's also it's got the uh, the restoration of a couple of scenes. Um, to note, just before we get into the actual review, the, the scenes that are added in there on the BFI um, version, they're not, you know, the same quality of picture and stuff. So <clears throat> if you don't like that, you know, sometimes I don't. And, you know, it's it's not ideal for me with this. Um, you know, there's definitely less to note that it is going to be, you know, a lot worse quality. It's not the same actual transfer and stuff looking as the actual rest of the film. But, you know, it does add in some vital scenes. But yes, uh, this is a film that uh, Terence Fisher um, directs. It's a Hammer Productions film. Um, <clears throat> yes, it's it's um, my first Hammer film, you know, uh, review. And um, as a kid, I watched a lot of Hammer stuff, you know, Hammer House of Horror, and you know some of their films um, as well, The Hound of the Baskervilles, which I've mentioned, uh, you know, in a couple of reviews. Um, you know, I absolutely love that film. And um, this is a, a year before that, um, and they kind of they, they kept, became big, you know, in the fifties with things like the Curse of Frankenstein, Frankenstein, and of course the Mummy, and, and this as well, you know. And this is, um, some regard it as their best work, you know, Hammer Productions. Um, you know, the, the, a lot of the Hammer films, you know, the, and TV series, they had a lot of problems uh, at times with acting uh, and stuff, um, some B grade issues. But I think this one, this is one of the ones that. that um, Maybe the one that I've seen the most that, that doesn't really let, you know, that run it down too much. You know, but um, this is definitely um, for me one of the best um, kind of Dracula films. Um, I still think Nosferatu, the original, and Nosferatu the Vampire, and Bram Stoker's Dracula are better than this. But you know, this is still a great film. Um, it's it's a very um, it's a very different um, you know interpretation. It's it's a it's a gothic horror. Um, you know, a lot of Hammer films were gothic kind of thing. You know, ram romanticism. Um, you know, and just kind of the medieval type sort of buildings and, and architecture and stuff that they used uh, in a lot of their productions. Kind of as well, uh, a lot of exaggerations in terms of everything. Really, um, you know, qu quite uh, you know, <coughs> distinguishable. You know, when when you see a ham film, but you know, it adds it adds for a surreal experience, and it kind of uh, it's kind of um, it's good. To, you know, for a horror that kind of works. But yes, this film um, is Christopher Lee as Dracula. Um, you know, you've got Peter Cushion as Van Helsing. You've also got Michael Goh. And, you know, it's just for me, I think it's a great film overall. Um, the first, I, I start off with the, the issues I have. Um, the first kind of 10 minutes, um, you know, everyone's familiar with the story of Dracula. In some way or another, you know, uh, Jonathan Harker usually um, goes to visit Count Dracula for whatever reason. It's, it's different in different films, um, different reasons. Uh, in this, he's you know posing as his librarian, but he kind of he, he knows you know about Dracula. He's he's kind of going goes to try and you know kill him and stuff. And um, you know you, it's just um, I think the issues I had, <coughs> you know, the, the actor that played Jonathan Harker wasn't great. Yeah, he's not as as bad as the Keanu Reeves performance in Bram Stoker, but um, it yeah the first ten minutes you know it just uh, as well the, the narration that he gives is a bit. You know, he's writing his diary, and um, it's you know he's writing obviously very slowly, but um, they kind of made the narration very very slow in the sense that he's, he's just reading very very slowly, and it just I don't know, not that I lost patience or anything, but it's just a bit. It could have been done better, I think, the narration and then them scenes. You know, he wasn't great. He wasn't like instantly, <clears throat> you know, a character you could root for, and I know that he's not really in the rest most of the rest of the film. It's not really a spoiler, um, you know, but, and then of course Van Helsing is the kind of the main character in this, but you know, it did affect the first 10 minutes and I felt it was a bit rushed. Um, I know that, of course, with this, you know, it's a bit different that they kind of, 
they didn't want to, to focus on Jonathan throughout most of the film, so they kind of that was you could say the prologue, but um, yeah, it, it could have been done better. But the scenes, there are some classic scenes there, and you know, Christopher Lee as Dracula, his first appearance and stuff is just amazing. And um, as well, the woman uh, that was was um, one of the vampires that was in there, I thought she was really good uh, actually. And um, you know, there's a, a couple of things that weren't thought out too well. You know, and the fact that with him getting locked in the room and stuff. It kind of didn't make sense a bit, but you know it, it, what I you know was striking is really the atmosphere, you know, and the um, just it's a really warm feel to this film, and uh, that gets better and better. But the atmosphere, you know, when he arrives at the castle and everything, it's just really perfect. Um, that's one of the things that is flawless in this film it is the atmosphere, the visuals, and um, just just the uh, the tone in the film as well is very very um, consistent and. Um, yeah, just the visuals in this film just look so so good, you know, very very atmospheric and creepy, very quite natural. Um, but then as well, the sets and everything are quite exaggerated, so it adds for a really interesting uh, mix, and it just works really well. The visuals in this film and um, the locations as well, very very. Um, it's just a kind of a nostalgic feeling. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, <coughs> you know, with with everything nostalgic. Uh, when you say something's nostalgic. Um, it's very very subjective, you know. It can mean it can be for a different number of reasons, um, but yes, yeah, just just watch it and find out in that sense. But just a really great feel to the film, the atmosphere and the location, everything. Um, just the only thing uh, in the first 10, 15 minutes to floor is is that character of Jonathan Arthur. Not bad, just not anything anyone that stands out, you know, and not not a great performance. And overall, I just felt some of them bits were a bit you know a bit rushed. The rest of the film, however, is um, has only really got a couple of minor flaws here and there, and is absolutely brilliant, you know. So um, you know, it just gets better and better, really. Peter Cushing uh, comes into it, you know, after the tw twenty minute mark or so, and he's just brilliant in this film. I, I think he was such a great actor, you know, and you know, he had, it was in quite a lot of uh, films and stuff. Uh, it was obviously known early on for his Hammer Hammer works. Um, it was in a Lauren Hardy that I reviewed actually as well. And of course, he's in Star Wars, um, the first one, and um, you know he was in loads of stuff. Um, and yeah, the, they disgracefully CGI CGI'd him in, in one of the Star Wars films. But yes, um, he was a great actor. Um, really, just always a <coughs> very, very good at giving delivering lines and uh, very very warm character, warm actor really. You know, and uh, just uh, you know just a great actor. I feel, and you know, he's matched by Christopher Lee in this film. You know. That's one of the things as well, you know. Um, Christopher Lee is just stunning. Um, it kind of, you know, I, I still think Gary Oldman played played a more compelling Dracula, and um, I suppose his performance was better overall. But Christopher Lee gives him a, a run for his money in this film. Um, I think this was his best performance as Dracula, Christopher Lee. He was really good in Prince of Darkness. Um, <clears throat> check that out if you've not seen that. Um, yeah, that's a lot worse than this, and it's got a lot of issues, but. The performance in that, what, what what happened with that one was uh, Christopher Lee, I think, ref refused to speak any of the lines because it was such a bad script. So he basically gave a silent performance, and that was really interesting. But in this one, he does talk, of course, and he, he yeah. But he's great in this film. The expressions on his face is just perfect. Um, really quite scary, you know, it, the facial expressions, and they've they got the, uh, you know, the red eye effects and everything, and then the teeth. It's just all, it's all perfect, really, and just his, his costume. Um, the costumes in this film as well, I love. Um, I know it very at times exaggerated, but I love that when it's done well, and um, it just gives it more of a surreal feel, you know, a kind of a fantastical elements into it, and that kind of works perfectly with this and um, with the Bram Stoker one. Actually, it was similar to that, and you know, it was even more so. But <clears throat> I just love the costumes in this film and. Um, the sets and everything, and uh, the cinematography as well. I think the cinematography is wonderful, actually. Um, you know, there's so many great films about this film, and it's a shame that, that some of the acting uh, does let it down. You know, there's, there's a couple of, um, you know, Lucy, she wasn't, the, the actress that played her wasn't great. And, you know, so one or two of the minor characters just appear, you know, brief appearances, like the the, the young guy that, that kind of knocks at the door for something, the little girl as well. Um, I have to kind of say, you know, they're not great. You know, they're a bit hammy. Uh, there's the kind of the pun there. Um, the, yes, Hammer Hammer films a lot of the time, most of them were hammy in, in, in some of the acting. But, you know, it just, 
the, the, the only flaws really I have are some of the acting, but luckily the central performances, uh, Michael Goh uh, and then, you know, Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee are great, you know, uh, especially Christopher Lee and Peter Cushion, you know, they're just stunning in this film. And, um, <clears throat> you know, just the film pr progresses after this 20 minutes. It just, it's really, really um, atmospheric, as I've said, you know, creepy, um, really, really strong narrative, I feel. Um, you know, it's constantly engaging. And uh, it's got such a charm to it, you know. Just the scenes where um, <coughs> kind of Van Helsing is is, is going uh, in different lodges and stuff. Um, you know, he goes in and, and, and inquires about um, Jonathan, and uh, you know, just kind of discovering clues and stuff. It's just really involving and uh, thoroughly enjoyable experience. You know, very very warm, and uh, it's got quite a lot of humour in this film match as well. You know, I felt as well. The first ten minute, fifteen minutes is quite like a different film. You know, it didn't have much humour in it, and um, yeah, yeah, it's more like a prologue to the film. But yeah, the rest of the film does have quite a lot of charm and humour to it as well. It works perfectly. Um, Peter Cushion is just yeah, it's just his character. Is, um, the way they've done it in this film is really great. Um, I thought the script it was really great in this film overall. Um, you know, it's quite an emotion, uh, emotional undercurrent to some of the stuff as well. Uh, even the soundtrack was great, you know. I will say that, that one of the other minor flaws, um, some of the, you know, intense scenes and stuff and the reveals and everything, um, at times the the, 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 uh, the score, you know, the loudness, the loud parts, um, a bit overbearing, you know, they, they are um, ever actually so slightly off-putting. Um, it's just a bit overused, some of the score, but then you've got the, the moments where it does work quite perfectly and it does warrant that, but sometimes it's a bit overused. That constant kind of um, you just loud music and stuff playing where it doesn't need to, but a lot of the times it does work really, really well. And overall, the actual score is amazing. I feel and uh, it's got some beautiful moments in it as well. Um, I just think as well the characters once you know once the film gets going properly, the characters are really good. Um, just the drive to the film is great. You know when Michael Go and, and uh, Peter Cushion team up. Um, for the second half mainly, it's just great, you know, it's really, really good, um, very enjoyable, um, kind of campy at times, but full of charm and, um, you know, constantly uh, focused, You could, really, and um, it's got some tense moments, uh, really, really sustained tension in some great sequences, classic, um, classic horror, really, this, and, um, you know, the, the scenes where they're kind of going to, to kill the, the body, you know, drive the stake through the heart and all that. It's just great, it's quite graphic, um, you know, in, in that sense. But Hammer films, you know, at times were. Um, and yeah, it just, um, I think that the ending is great as well. Um, you know, the, the final showdown, you could say. And um, it's quite a low key Dracula film compared to say, um, well, even the, the, yeah, Nosferatu's and uh, especially Bram Stoker, it's a bit more low key. Um, there's only a few locations used and stuff, and um, you know it's more about atmosphere and, and stuff, and uh, it's, you know, yeah, just uh, it focuses quite a lot on the characters. It's not big, 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 um, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of action scenes and stuff that, that Bram Stoker has. It's hard to explain, but yeah, this is it's a lot more low key. Um, you know, it's not a massive budget, and um, you know, Hammer films weren't for the most part. But it just, it just um, overall, I think that this film is a great film. It's a great horror, um, stunning atmosphere, use of locations. You know, the, the sets and everything, the costumes are stunning. Everything really is quite top notch, um, apart from some of the uh, the characters, you know, performances, and uh, the first 10, 15 minutes. You know, they they, they weren't bad or anything. They, I think they were quite, you know, they were good, very good at times, but. Just not on the level of the rest of the film, and could have been better, you know. Jonathan Harker uh, and bits with him it could have been better. Um, and yeah, it's just not it's not quite a masterpiece um, or anything like that. Um, even when it is at its best, you know, it, there's a couple of masterful moments, but it's not, you know, it's just not top tier horror. Um, but I think I'd have to give this film a 92%. Um, I think it's definitely a great film. Um, as I've said, really, the only main flaw, minor. Uh, there's some minor flaws with the acting um, throughout, and uh, the first sort of 15 minutes, you know, it could have been a lot better. Um, and of course, there's just some issues throughout with some of the use of the soundtrack, and um, yeah, just I suppose that's it. You know, the editing is great. You know, overall, it's really well directed by Terence Fisher, 
and uh, it's just a film I love overall. You know, it's um, full of charm, full of atmosphere, and uh, just thoroughly entertaining film. Um, highly recommend it. Uh, definitely recommend this. You know, and you can, uh, you know, I'd recommend. Um, yeah, I'd recommend trying out the different um, you know, versions, um, see what you think is the best. But yeah, um, stunning film. Um, so thanks for watching my review of Terence Fisher's Dracula.